All right, this is Bal uh, Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community Slack Science out here in sunny Davis, California. Um, today we're going to do a video about the Edelrid Eddy and uh, how to use it, uh, some cool features about it. Uh, we've done a review of the Eddy in the past and we've also tested um, how well it does in slipping with various sizes of ropes. But uh, I've had some people have some problems with breaking their handle right here at this spot right in there because they're pulling too much. So I uh, thought I would make a little video on how to properly use the device. Um, so to start, um, so this is the Eddy. Here's the handle. Uh, to open the device, you simply press this button while pushing on the side plate and it opens like that. And um, it's a little different than a lot of camming style brakes in that you load it in the opposite direction. So here's our rope here. Uh, you'll notice that there's a hand on the, on the, the, the plate here. Kind of see it right there. That's where we want the tail to come out. And then the climber guy indicates where the loaded strand. So if we load the rope like this, this strand is going to be going to our pulleys and this is the tail in which we'll be installing a multiplier like like that and pulling it's the, the, the strand that we pull on and you can close it off like that. Um, another thing about the eddy is the anchor hole here where you latch on is pretty wide and so it only works with certain types of shackles, the best being the 3 8 inch twist shackle. So uh, to install it on this, it's not going to simply fit on. It's a little bit too wide there, you can see. But there's a way to get around that. If you kind of put one lobe in like that, you can torque the shackle on like that. And that's the easiest way to install it. And then it then it sits really nicely on there. And uh, one of the, uh, another nice feature about the Eddy is the profile size. It's very thin. So thin, in fact, that it fits on the inside of most pulleys perfectly. So it's great for the embedded brake technique, which we will uh, go into in a, bit, in a minute. So let's, let's install the device and show you how to use it. All right, so we've got the Eddy set up here. If you can see, it's uh, embedded in the SMC pulleys. And see how nicely it fits. Really thin. You get very little friction with the ropes. Um, so the first thing I'd like to go over with how to use this thing is uh, pre-tensioning with, with it. So sometimes when you pull on the strand of rope here, coming out, the cam won't close. And so when that happens, uh, there's a technique known as thumbing the cam. It's kind of weird sounding, but uh, it works. So if you look here on the underside, try to get some good light here. Hold on. Yeah, it's kind of dark, but um, yeah, so the cam here, you can kind of see it. If you pull down towards the tail of the brake, it'll make a clicking noise. You can kind of hear it. And so that's that's manually closing the cam. And so when you pull on the strand of rope, you need a little bit more tension for it to work. It will close, allowing you to add uh, quite a bit of tension before installing your multiplier by pulling this strand towards the brake while simultaneously pulling this one with your other hand. And so thumbing that cam will help you do that. 
So I'll show you uh, a bit more what I meant by thumbing the cam. You pull in tension like this, pulling, pulling in with this hand and then pulling out with this hand, sometimes the cam won't lock. But if you thumb the cam, close it like that, it'll then start to catch, allowing you to pre-tension quite a bit without installing the multiplier, just like that. So once you have your line tensioned, um, you're going to want to tie off the tail. And uh, my preferred method is to use a releasable knot. Uh, that way if the brake starts slipping, you're not stuck with an unreleasable knot that's jamming the cam up. So what I usually do is a slip knot. So if you make a loop like that, and then take, take a bite and pass it through the loop, that's, basic, that's just a basic slip knot, and you can get it as close as you can to the, the eddy there. And I usually leave a, a pretty long tail, and then I do an overhand on a bite and clip that to a carabiner behind. And then that ensures that the whole bite is not going anywhere, but it also leaves the releasable aspect of the knot so that you can undo your slack line in the event that the brake starts to slip. Uh, so now I'd like to go over how to detension with the eddy. Just in case that last clip was too dark, you can kind of see here a little closer the slip knot that I created in the tail coming out and then being tied off to a carabiner that's connected to the shackle that is anchoring your pulley system. We can use that same carabiner to detension our line as well, uh, which I'll go into right now. So the first thing you want to do is unhook all your backups here. Untie it. Just like that, and release it. Just like that. Undo your slip knot. So, oftentimes we'll have a lot of tension on our slack lines. And so it's, uh, if you just start releasing tension with a ton of tension on the line, it's gonna be very difficult to control. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna add friction by taking this tail and redirecting it through this same carabiner, just like that. So when you start to release, you're gonna hold tension just like that while pulling this handle with the other hand. Um, one thing to note about the eddy is there's a sweet spot. If you pull too far, the cam is gonna reclose on the rope. And then if you continue to pull, that's when you can start to risk breaking your handle right there where it connects the, to this, this lever arm right here. So that's an important thing to know when you're detensioning. There's a, a very small sweet spot. It's about, it starts here and it ends about when the arm is positioned like that. You go beyond that, the cam will close and it won't work anymore in this direction. But another cool thing about it is when you start to close the handle, once it's gone beyond the sweet spot, it'll also release. So if you'd rather push the handle to release, you can do that, go beyond beyond the sweet spot, let the cam close, and then start to close the handle again, and it'll also release. Uh, I'm gonna can set up the camera here and I'll show you how, how it's done. All right, as you can see here, I got the tail redirected coming off of there to the carabiner. So what you're going to want to do when you want to, when you start detensioning is to have a firm grasp on that tail coming out. And then start to push down with the handle, grab onto it, and very slowly open it. And then you can slowly let out tension. Don't let that rope tail slip through your hands like this, but hold onto it and slowly move your hand towards that carabiner. And so, uh, like I was saying before, there's a sweet spot with the eddy. If you pull too far, the cam will close. The, the cam's closed right now. And so, if I continue to pull, the handle's gonna break right there where it connects to this lever arm. So what if, I, if I do that, if I 
open it beyond the sweet spot, I'm going to have to close it again. But remember, when you push it in the other direction, it's also going to open. So you can close it like that, go beyond the sweet spot again, pull it too far, continue detensioning too far. I usually just keep it right there in the sweet spot and slowly let tension out. Eventually it's going to get loose enough where you can remove this and just open it like that. And then at some point you're going to want to do the thumbing the cam technique. So pull tension in from the, from the pulley and thumb the cam open this time and you can slowly let out tension. And then there you go. That's how you use the eddy. Uh, thanks for watching. Again, my name is Jerry Mischewski with Balance Community Slack Science. Uh, you can view more videos and tutorials like this at balancecommunity.com or slackscience.com. Thanks again.